vehicles pitching downrange. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. As you can see on your screen and heard by the cheers of folks with me here at Mission Control, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites. Although at liftoff, gravity Power is pulling straight down on the rocket. As we ascend, we actually tilt the engines. The technical term for that is gimbling for all my rocket nerds out there. Uh, and that actually turns the rocket horizontally. Falcon is supersonic. So we're still going up, but with that gimbling, we're now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. That's what we call a gravity turn. Now we're going... Max Q. There we heard the call out for Max Q. That's the point in which the vehicle experiences the greatest dynamic pressure. So we're going to throttle those engines back up. And we're coming up to a series of events that will happen in quick succession. For those of you that have followed our launches previously, you know not to blink. The first of those three events Start is... Start of MVAC engine chill. All right, so we heard call out MVAC engine chill. We're basically throwing, flowing some of the super chilled liquid oxygen through the turbo pumps of the second stage MVAC engine in preparation for its ignition. Uh, but first we have to do MECO or main engine cutoff. Uh, that's where all nine Merlin engines shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next milestone, which is stage separation, where the first stage and second stage will separate. Uh, as the first stage makes its way back to Earth for landing, the second stage continues, with, continues its journey with SES-1, or second engine startup. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine will ignite and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. View there inside our interstate. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. All right, so all three of those events in quick succession. Bearing separation confirmed. And there we can see that the fairing halves have separated, exposing our Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see those grid fins deploying on the first stage. Both stages are on nominal trajectories. All right, great news there. Everything looking nominal for both the first and second stage. Now, while the second stage is doing its job, the first stage is actually coming back home to Earth, and it will execute two burns today. The first burn is the entry burn. We will uh, ignite three of its engines, three of the nine Merlin engines at the bottom of the first stage uh, to help slow the stage down. The second burn is the landing burn, and that's where we ignite one engine, just the center engine, that brings the, and that will bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Uh, that drone ship is about the size of a football field. Everything continues to look nominal signal, Bermuda. for both first and second stage. Beautiful shot of the second stage MVAC engine there on the right hand side of your screen. With the beautiful blue marble rotating slowly behind it. Now that first stage, as you can see, is um, positioning, it's beginning to uh, basically float its way back to Earth. It's, it's currently uh, above the Earth's atmosphere. In order to help it make its way back through the Earth's atmosphere, we're going to perform a re-entry burn. Not currently visible from that view, um, we have landing legs stowed on the side of the booster. Falcon 9 is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber aluminum honeycomb. They're placed symmetrically uh, at the base of the rocket and stowed during ascent, and they will deploy just prior to landing. As we come
come up to the entry burn. A reminder, this is a three-engine burn meant to slow the first stage as it hits the thicker layers of the Earth's atmosphere. As you can see, Falcon 9 has grid fins on it. It's equipped with four hypersonic grid fins. They're positioned near the top of the first stage and near the base of the inner stage. So basically where those two pieces of hardware connect. Currently, the first stage is uh, using its grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. If you watch closely, you can see those page grid fins two actuate. Trajectory continues to look nominal. Those grid fins help orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during descent. Now there, we just saw a puff of gas um, that is just nitrogen gas. Uh, we use nitrogen gas bursts for attitude control on the first stage. Stage one entry burn startup. So we can see the first stage has stage one MTS is saved. begun its entry burn. We have reignited three of the nine Merlin engines to help slow the booster down as it re-enters the thick part of the Earth's atmosphere. This burn will last about 20 seconds. Everything continues to look nominal for second stage. We can see that that entry burn has concluded for first stage. Shut down. Again, that uh, white gas that you see coming from the booster are uh, the coal, excuse me, are the, the nitrogen gas bursts that we use for attitude control. As I previously mentioned, um, you were able to see the soot markings on this booster left over from its previous flights, its previous 11 flights. This is the 12th flight for this booster. Stage one trajectory nominal. The rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, that we use as fuel for Falcon 9 uh, is carbon-based. So when the fuel burns, it generates soot. Uh, because the re-entry occurs with engines first, the booster actually flies through its own plume, which deposits that soot onto the side of the rocket. So be sure, be sure to check out the feed from the onboard camera. Um, during landing, you may be able to see that soot sticking to the lens. <laughs> Uh, when we light the center engine for the landing burn, we gimbal that engine uh, also to help guide the stage in addition to the grid fins. So there we can see that booster making a re-entry through the clouds now. Everything continues to look nominal with second stage, stage there. Landing burn. Stage two terminal guidance. All right, we heard the call out and can see there on screen the landing burn has begun. Watch closely, we should be able to see the drone ship come into view. This drone ship is about the size of a football field. Stage one landing leg deploy. As you can see, this booster has Stage touched down once again. This is the 12th recovery for this particular booster. Stage two FDS is safe. This recovery also marks the 115th recovery of a first stage booster. Gorgeous shot of that booster on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Up next will be second engine cutoff. Second engine cutoff. Which we saw just signal. there. Cape. At this point in time, we are waiting to hear confirmation of good orbit for our second stage now that the second engine that Not Merlin... Nominal parking orbit. All right, and there's that confirmation that we we're waiting to hear. So with that confirmation of a successful second engine cutoff and good orbit, we'll be ending our webcast for today's launch. As I mentioned previously, we'll be confirming payload deployment via our social channels, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you to the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting our mission. And of course, thank you to our viewers and all our Starlink customers for using our service at this time. If you're interested in signing up for if you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head on over to Starlink.com.